I was standing beside her to put makeup on her. As I was putting the makeup, I asked myself, Stella, what if it's you? Am I better than her? She's an evangelist. She started preaching the gospel. Even when, before I became born again, she was ordained. 1989. Am I better than her? You know, the thought, there are so many things that always, that came to my head at that moment. And I your mouth and begin to worship the name of the Lord. Begin to thank God for what he has done in our life. Begin to thank God for the air that we breathe this morning. Begin to thank God that you are standing on your feet this morning. Begin to thank God that you came to church this morning. Begin to worship God Almighty that there is no one in the hospital. You are not in the hospital. Either your family or your children are in the hospital. Thank God because we are not in the mortuary. Thank God because those that are dying cannot praise God anymore. chapter 7 verse 8 remember what he said he said that that the end is better the end of a team is he, sorry he said that the end of a team than the beginning better than the end the, the end of 18 than the beginning because when you started a house from the scratch you may not know how beautiful that house may turn to but at the end of everything when you look at that house, you will smile. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we are going to pray. I don't know how your beginning was. But when you look around today, you can as well testify how the end of this year is. So we are going to pray that all my struggle this year we surely end in praise. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer. Say, Father, all my struggle this year will end in praise. In the name of Jesus. My Father, my Father. All my struggle this year, Lord. It will surely end in praise. 
praise in the name of Jesus. My father, my father, every of our struggle this year, Father, if we show the any praise in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Ezekiel 34, 16. Ezekiel 34, 16. He says, I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away. Bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I feed them in judgment. Hallelujah. Beloved, I don't know what you think that you lose. I don't know what you think that you're missing this year. I don't know what you think that, oh, this is my prayer point. God did not accomplish it. But I just want you to pray. Say, God of restoration. Say, restore everything that I've lost from January till this December. Let it be restored back to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Say, God, restore me, oh God. He is the God of restoration. He's the God of the dying minutes. He's the God of now. He is the God of now. He will do it now. He will do it now. Whatsoever that you pay, Father, that this thing, oh God, will not pass me by this year. Father, restore me, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let us stand to Yandaraba. Father, let there be a restoration in my life, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, restore us, oh God. Restore us, restore us, restore us, God, in abundance, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord has got to restore you, because in the book of Psalm 84, verse 11, he said that no good thing shall ever withhold from us. Father, every good thing will not withhold from me this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is no good thing that will be withheld from us, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every of our heart desire this year must surely come to pass. Must be accomplished, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, restore your children to God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father, for restoring us to God. For in Jesus' mighty name, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 52. The book of Jeremiah chapter 52, I will read from verse 31. It says, Now it came to pass, in the 37th year of the captivity of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, in the 12th month, on the 25th day of the month, that Evo Merodash, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Joachim, king of Judah, and brought him out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him, and gave him a more prominent seat than those of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jeshim changed from his prison garment, and he ate bread regularly before the king of all the days of his life. And as for his provision, there was a regular ration given him by the king of Babylon, a portion for each day until the day of his death, all the days of his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, we are talking about the king of Judah here, whom the king of Babylon was taken into captivity. They conquered them, they captured them. He was kept in the prison for almost 36 years. And then another king, God raised another king. When that king came up, he remembered him. I call it the grace of God. The grace of God located at King Joachim in the prison. And then the king brought him up and do what? Remove his garment, his prison garment, and place him on salary, and place him to be eaten in his table. It is the grace of God. When you look around your life today, you will see it's the grace that always speaks for us. So now I just want us to pray. Say, God, let your grace locate me in any area of my life that there have been a mistake this year. Let God locate me in the name of Jesus. Ask for the grace of God. Sometimes, knowingly or unknowingly, we may make one 
or two mistakes that may delay that blessing. Ask God, Father, locate me in any way, any area of my life that I have made a mistake. In any way, I have made a mistake this year that will hinder my blessing, that will stop my blessing not to be fulfilled this year. Father, locate me by your grace. 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 In the name of the Father, locate my family, oh God. Locate my children. Locate my husband. In the name of Jesus. Let your grace, let your mercy speak for us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we decree, oh God. Father, let your mercy, let your mercy, let your mercy, let your mercy speak for us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba, Father. For you alone, Father, is worthy to be praised. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I just want us to pray one prayer. One minute, please. I just want us to say one prayer. When you read the book of Hosea chapter 13, verse 14, it says, I will ransom them from the poor of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death, I will be your plague. Oh, grave, I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. Beloved, this is the month of celebration. And every month of celebration, the devil always likes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is the month of celebration. Even our people back home, they are preparing, they are jubilating. I'm going to go home. I'm going to travel from Lagos to Abuja, from Abuja to the east, from the east to the west. Beloved, we are going to pray for them now. Even us that are celebrating here, we will not end up in the hospital. We will not end up in the hospital. Ask God that death will not see them in the name of Jesus. That every spirit of death will be around them. Let God cancel it in the name of Jesus. Let God take it away from them now in the name of Jesus. We cancel every untimely death. We cancel every untimely death in our loved ones, in the life of our loved ones, in the life of my mother, in the life of my siblings. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we will not die young, but we will live to declare your glory in the land of the living. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me sit here, please. Let's take our wisdom and uh, this. Thank you very much. Wisdom R. Please, I need all your ears. Wisdom of the day from our daddy. Media, help me. John 17, 17. The theme for today's talk, um, wisdom of the day is sanctified by the word. Sanctified by the word. Our text is sanctified them through thy Sanctify them through thy truths. Thy word is truth. So we can jump it from the truth to the word. To say, sanctify them through thy word. I'm permitted to say that. Because it says, sanctify them through thy truths. There is something called truth. Your word is truth. So I can put the word in place of truth as those that do mathematics. Say, so if x plus 2. When x is 1, you will put 1 anywhere you see x, isn't it? Yeah. So they said the word is truth. So I'm going to carry truth, a word, and put it anywhere I see truth. So I'm going to reread re that statement, that scripture. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy word. God knows the uh, troubles you are going through. You know, if you, if you look at this scripture very well, look at everything. When he says, uh, Jesus says something, he says, um, when he says, you are not of the world, he said, when he said, he said that statement, you know, he knows there are space to you in this world, but you are not of this world because you are in Christ. You have been made Christ. So you have been made a, a child of God. So you are like an ambassador in this world. So but you being in this world, it's not going to take you. It's not praying to take you out of this world, but that God may sanctify you by his word. The, uh, Daddy said here in, uh, in his introduction, he says, there are unusual times and everyone is saying, can't you see that things are not working and there are no answers? The world is a cup, now the world now is the world we are living in. It's a cup of trembling and many are wondering what is going on. No one has the answer. All the postulations, calculations, and predictions are failing flat. 
He said, but I come to present to you something that can never fail. The infallible, errorless, impregnable, authoritative word of God. God addicted to his word and you will never regret it. This is the art to connect to the word of God. That you will see the word become flesh manifest in your life. The scripture says, the entrance of the word giveth light and giveth understanding to the simple. You want the word to make flesh and to happen to you. You know, yeah, there is one thing, yeah, there is two, there's one day I was, yeah, I think I was, I think I was just getting some inspiration and then uh, I was, the inspiration was coming about healing. And you see, this, my, yeah, the, the, script, the inspiration I got took me to the scripture that says, and he sent forth his word, and his word healed them. And while I was pondering over that scripture, I heard, when, I heard another voice say something, he said, healing them is not only for sickness, it's for every aspect of your life. Because he says something, he says, and he healed them of their disease. That's what the scripture says. It says in set for this one, he healed them of all their disease. So it could be a physical illness. It could be a spiritual one. It could be a, um, an, any, let me put it, a psychological one. It could be a financial sickness. It could be a marital sickness. It could be any form of sickness. It could be any form of disease. Anything that troubles you. The Bible says he sent forth his word and his word healed them. There is a power, there is power in the word of God. All you need to do is embrace his word. Hold on to his word. Daddy says here, says so that his word will become flesh and live with you. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Open John 1, 2 for, verse 2 for me. John 1, 2 please, quickly. The same was the beginning with God. 3 please. Just keep going. And this were made by him, and without him was not anything that was that was made. Verse 4, please. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5, please. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Verse 6. And there was a man sent for God whose name was John. Okay, what I want to say is about, about his word becoming life and being, being the light of men. That's what the Bible is saying. That's what that is trying to point out to us. There is something that can satisfy you in this world that is clear. If you don't have an answer to what happens to you, you don't know where the, to get your answers from. The answer is in this world. It says, sanctify them by your word. John 17, 17. Leave that chapter for us on the screen. Sanctify them through thy word. For thy word is what truth. I've told us how we can put word in place of that truth. It's a simple mathematics. In John 17, 15, God, let's open that. Jesus in his prayer for the church, when I said you can read all, he said something, this is what I was trying to talk about. He says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that, that, thou, that thou shouldest keep them from evil. He says, Jesus in his prayer for the church in John 17, 15 said, Lord, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world. In other words, Jesus is saying, I know the world is filled with evil. The world is filled with challenges and difficulties. He knows pressures here and there, tribulations, try and name them, troubles. He says, but I am not praying that you take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from evil. Thou should sanctify them. Put it well. I declare that God will keep you from every evil, and every evil will bow before you. Amen. The wicked will bow at your gates in the name of Jesus. He says, No plague, that is, says, no plague or calamity will come near your dwelling. Beloved, even though we are in the world, even as Christ is not of the world, because we and Jesus have become one. When he said, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, he's saying, set them apart in the midst of pandemic. 
Set them apart in the midst of challenges. Set them apart in the midst of inflation. Set them apart in the midst of insecurity. Set them apart in the midst of wars. In the midst of trials, in the midst of disease, since that's what he was trying to say. Even when they are in this world, he says, Lord, by your word, separate them. He says, by your word, sanctify them, set them apart. Sanctify them means set them apart or make them uncommon. Don't make them used to what they see in the world. The word of God makes you uncommon. When others are saved, there is a casting down. You will say there is a lifting up. When others are saved, there is no hope. You will say the hope of Christ makes us not ashamed. When others are saved that they are sick, you will be saying you are here. When others are saying you are, they have failed, you will say no, I am successful. This is what I was trying to say in the beginning. That's the conclusion from that day. He says, I see sent forth his word. What you need to do to, to be sanctified is to embrace his word. Is to meditate his word until his word becomes flesh in you. How do you do that? It's by going, reading his scripture, putting it into practice. What is it? When people are saying there is casting down, you say, no, that's not what the scripture says. You go back, you open your Bible, and you say, no, the Bible did not tell me this. You keep meditating on the word of God. The word of God says, I, there is lifting up. He says, when thousands shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my left, I say, none shall come near me. You say, turn to the world, you say, the word of God says, I am the head and not the tail. The word of God says, I shall not fail. Even when your result is looking like it's going behind, you says, no, that's not the word of God. You keep hitting the word, meditating is, do you know what? I am a testimony. That word will become flesh. Even when people around you say, ah, I don't, I don't know how the economy is. You say, no, I don't know how it's working for me because I know what the word of God has said towards me. Let's stand on our feet and begin to thank God for his word. Just open your mouth and thank him. Ask him for the grace to meditate on the word. Because there's something you need this morning to be sanctified in the circumstances you find yourself. And that is the word of God. Ask him for the grace to meditate on the word of God. Ask him for the grace to meditate on the word of God. Ask him to teach you. Ask him to make the word light into you. Let him, ask him to make the word light in you. Open your mouth and thank him. Thank him for his word. Thank him for his word. Oh, man, that
I know the normal schedule is for us to go ahead with the worship. But today is a special Sunday. Every first Sunday of the month is Thanksgiving in Trem House of uh, the Spirit of David. Hallelujah. So I know we have our annual Thanksgiving next to Sunday. as a mini one, as a rehearsal for the main Thanksgiving. So we are gearing up. We are going to use this one to see how that one will be. Hallelujah. The only difference in this service is that we are not going to give uh, testimonies as usual. We are going to postpone our testimonies for the big Thanksgiving. But on our Thanksgiving Sundays, our children always come to give uh, Bible recitations. We encourage them. We are catching them young. And we are sowing the seeds of the word, that, like the truth, like we learned this morning in our wisdom of the day. We are putting those seeds in them so that as they grow, they will be tapping from it. Wherever they find themselves, the word will be trailing them. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is time for our children to give their recitation. Can we give them a round of applause? Amen. Amen. Which is The Bible verse is taken from John 8, verse 13. Tell the truth and the truth will set you free. My Bible verse is set from Psalms 91, chapter 4. He shall cover you with his feathers. Under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckle. Amen. 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 For God demonstrate his love for us so, as so um, is this while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. This is taken from Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and a light onto my path. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My memory was taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. For us, for to us, a, a child is born. For us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting, everlasting, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember verses taken from Proverbs 14, verse 1 and 2. Every wise woman makes her home strong, but a foolish woman destroys her home with her own hands. An honest person respects and obeys the Lord, but someone who, de someone who deceives others shows that he does not respect the Lord. Hallelujah! Good morning, church. Good morning. Today I'm going to be taking my memory verse from Psalm 136, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord. For he, he is good and his love endures from Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 H
For he has turned for me my mourning into dancing. He has taken off my sackcloth and called me with gladness. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My memory verse is taken from Psalms 118, verse 5. I call on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a, a broad place. Children's choir minister to us at this time. <laughs> Bible reading from who? Oh, sorry about that. Peace will give us Bible. The works of the Lord are great, sought out all of them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness enjoyed forever. He had made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath shown his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are, ver are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and in of righteousness. He sent redemption unto his people. He had commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise and joy forever.
sing it today Amen. to the glory of the holy name and for someone to be blessed. Amen. 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 I don't know what you're going through. I don't know if you think that, oh, my own life has finished. But there is someone up there that always hold our hand even when we think it is over. Amen. Amen. Listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I almost let them go. I was bright on the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see. You know, Pastor said, God bless you, ma. You know, when she approached me this morning, she said, ma, I have a special song. 
Please, can you give me that? So, of course, uh, I said, what was this song? He said, God kept me. I said, oh, this is my song. As, it, as she stand here and she's ministering, pastor say, your song. I say, yes, that's my song. God bless you, man. And I believe that this song has ministered to someone here this morning. I don't know what you are going through. But look back. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. God still kept you. So don't bother. Make sure you keep you are keeping on. Keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. Because that door will open for you. If you don't give up, I promise you, that door will open for you. I have been there. And God opened the door. And I'm still moving forward. I'm still pressing on. Even when I fall down, God will pick me up. So, it's God that is going to pick you up in Jesus' name. Only if you believe, can we stand on our feet, worship. Let's just begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Wave your hands to him, wave your hands to him. Bless his name, bless his name, magnify his name. Thank him for all he has brought us to December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. He brought us through the year. He gave us a reason to smile, a reason to sing. Lord, we worship you, Lord, we worship you. Give him praise, give him glory. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we magnify your name.
We are complete. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm the half, most happiest woman in this house this morning because our reverence in the house. Shout hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. 
Jesus. God is a game changer, isn't it? He's a game changer. <laughs> when David was encamped by Saul and his men in that cave, he was already in their hands. They surrendered the cave. There was no room of escape. Humanly speaking, that was meant to be the end. But suddenly, the game changer himself, he came on the scene. Hallelujah. He gave Saul an assignment. All of a sudden that he couldn't resist. Everything that has been scheduled to encamp and to put an end to your family or to anyone around you. Today we give them an unfinished assignment in the name of Jesus. Today is the Thanksgiving service and Reverend, I want to say thank you for appointing this everyday woman to stand on this exalted altar to share the word. I didn't go to Bible school. I was only born again. Hallelujah. And that grace has been sufficient. Hallelujah. Amen. I appreciate the grace and the honor. And I pray everyone that will be under the sound of my voice for the next few minutes shall be richly blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. The month of September was the month of help. And at the end of every month, we would always have a Thanksgiving in the first week. And today is a Thanksgiving service. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord says, speak to the people about help from above. There is help for someone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before I go ahead, I want to appreciate my divinely connected sister. Sister Kemi, she keeps surprising me. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. She said I will be here today. I say it's fine by me. And it's not only that she's here. But she's also here with somebody. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. I love you dearly. The Lord connected us. It's a divine connection. And God has a reason. And mommy beside you, we love you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us. We love you with the love of God. And we pray that the God of this commission, whom we serve, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, will meet you at every point of your need in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be very fast. I gave a warning earlier to be on the safe side that I'm not a conventional preacher. So allow my inadequacies. Hallelujah. Yeah. Help is the act or an instance of doing or supplying something to make it easy for another person to complete a tax or to deal with a problem. That is what help is. It's a supply of something that is lacking. I want to carry out a tax, but I don't have all the tools I need. And so I need someone who has such tools to come, and that is where team are formed. Help is something, is an instance. Supplying something that is missing for a tax to be completed. And we've seen in the Bible men and women who encountered God's help because there is no one that is sufficient in himself. Never think you're only sufficient for yourself. We need each other. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell somebody, say we need each other. Need each other. I want to hear it like you mean it. We need each other. Need each other. Hallelujah. Yeah. Psalm chapter 121. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From hence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the earth he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He said, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth. Even forever more. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the pure scripture of help. When David was in need, he turned to the Lord. Let's learn to turn to the right place for the right help. There are different kind of help in life. 
that we need at each junction of our lives. As a youth, there is a kind of help that you need. As a married woman, depending on the stage that you are in family, there is a kind of help that you need. There are different kind of help. So you must know the kind of help that you need. There is emotional help. Emotion must sound simple, but it's not as simple. That is why today we have therapists. If you need certain help, you go to them, they sit you down, they walk you through the circumstances to safety. I remember a great minister then in America, I used to follow him. He ran into crisis and he had to confess to the wife and they went for emotional therapy. Hallelujah. There's informational help. There is something you want to do, but you don't know so much about it. You can research. You can talk to people around you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't, be, don't be shy. The word ASK in the scripture says, ask, seek, and knock. The same acronym that means the same thing. That's the only thing in the is an acronym, and it means what that acronym is. Ask. And when you begin to define, say, ask, seek, and knock. There are levels of help. So you need to know the level that you are and ask for help. I remember some time ago, I was having returned here. I needed something that fits me to do. I was asking a lot of questions. I asked from people in this house. I was connected to people that are on my field. Oh yes, every day we are talking and they were guiding me through the path. Hallelujah. There is tangible help. Maybe help of substance. I remember I was writing some exams. I didn't have all the money. I have to ask my friends. I said, look, I need cash. I'm not good at borrowing. I don't borrow. But this one is a worthy cause. And she opened her service and said, how much do you need? She brought out everything and gave to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask for help if you need it. If you ask for help to buy a shabby, I won't give you. <laughs> or help to mark your 100th birthday and you want to close the road to Dublin. Nobody will listen to you. No. But ask for reasonable help. Hallelujah. Amen. Young people ask for help. In your career, what stage are you? You need to choose a career properly. Ask for help. People that have gone ahead, speak to them. Your friend is doing it may not be the reason why you must do because your makeup is different. Daniel is different from Meshach. Meshach was different from Abednego. You must know yourself. What do you love? What is your passion? So you must define your goals and ask for the right help. There is also help for belonging, social life. That is one thing we have struggled with as blacks here. This land where we are, they are very social. It's built in their culture. If a little child interacts with you here, you will think he's an old man. So if you need help, ask your friends. Be sure you build good relationship. Talk to your friend. Look, I'm struggling here. How do we work it over? And somebody will be there to talk to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And there is also spiritual help. There is also marriage to help. I remember some stage in marriage. I said I was carrying so much on my shoulder. I had a lot to do in academics. I had a lot to do in the church. I had a lot, I had a lot to do in the family. Then I met an elderly woman who wrote a book, The Seven Stages of Marriage. She's my spirit, my counselor in marriage. I went to her house. We sat down, she brought out dry fish we were eating, you know, just rolling on the rug. And I said, Mama, tell me, what, any challenge? Have you been through any challenge in life? Oh, she started telling me stories. She said there was a time my husband was out of job for seven years. Even the in-laws in the house were not aware. I said, ah. Seven good years. She would wake up in the morning. Daddy, dress up, dress up, dress up. Daddy will not tire. They are going to work. They hop on the car. Daddy will drive. After Daddy drop, he said, Daddy, that's the library near my office. Go there. Seven solid years. But one thing kept them. They were faithful to each other. Hallelujah. That story was all I needed. 
I held my mouth and I went up to the house. Lord, help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You must know the stage that you are. And ask for the right help. And ask from the right source. Because if you ask from the wrong source, you could get the wrong answer without knowing. May the Lord direct us in Jesus' name. Amen. And there is spiritual help. There are times we really don't understand how it is. Approach your pastor. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Just pray with me. Just pray for me. I need help. I don't know how it is, but I know I need help. Don't be shy. Because the spiritual is like the root of a tree. If it's not firmly rooted in the soil, at every wind, you see the tree falling. So let's ask for help. Hallelujah. Amen. And there are ways to get help. So write this one down. We are churches that take note. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to read that more quickly. Then if I can speak on one or two, then we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Ways to get help from the world. Very quickly, number one, from the world. Number two, through prayers. Number three, by faith. Number four, through the prophet. Number five, true friends. Number six, by favor. Number seven, by thanksgiving. And number eight, through Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you wrote them down. Through the word, through prayer, through faith, through the man of God. During the week we were in the Bible study, as if it shouldn't end. And we're looking at the Zarephite widow who had nothing left. She thought she had nothing left. There are times that a word from this altar can point you to what you thought was nothing. And that can just be the help that you need. True friends. There was a time I, I was doing a research on a course I was doing. And three young friends from college, one studied software engineering, one studied finance, the other one studied Another course. And as they graduated from school, they decided to be startup together as friends. Today they own one of the biggest ticket booking agency in the United Kingdom. <coughs> if you have the right friends, you can go places. Hallelujah. Amen. So number one by God's word. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 to 4. Can we have it on the board? Very quickly, Proverbs chapter 24, it said by verse 3 to verse 4, it said, through wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. The word of God are pearls of wisdom. They are pearls of wisdom. It could be from ministrations like this. It can drop on you and it comes alive. For Jesus says, for the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. If there is nothing else to trust, trust in the word. They are pearls of wisdom. One of the memory verses this morning was the Psalm 109 verse 105. Is that correct? It says that word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Stumbling and falling is possible in darkness. But where there is light, there is safety and direction. Hallelujah. Study the word for yourself. When my kids were growing up, we talk a lot about the Bible stories. Because the Bible stories they are epistle of men's life's chronicles. They were real people who experienced real life issues like us. Their failures were documented. Their victories were also documented. That's why the Bible is truth. It doesn't color it. He put it the way it were. David loved women. The Bible left it for us to, to breathe upon. Why did he love women? It's a dilemma for you and I. But the Lord put it there so you can learn. Solomon succeeded 
David. He was a man that sought God for wisdom at the beginning. Towards the end of his reign, he fell in love with so many women. And at the end, he said vanity upon vanity. All is what? Vanity. They are pearls of wisdom. What do you want to learn from that? Is it profitable to give your strength to women? No. Proverbs said, live well. He said, my son, do not give your strength to women. Oh, I'm a woman. Are we bad? <laughs> We're not bad at all. But I think one problem is enough. I'm sufficient problem for my husband. So as a man, you don't need two of my problems. You don't need two problems. Just stay with one. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't give your strength to women. Hallelujah. These are best of wisdom. So as you grow, learn to control your trousers. Self-control. The fruit of the spirit. I'm deviating. Why? Hallelujah. God's word is so beautiful. He said you can build your home by the word of God. I love yesterday we were here. Pastor Stella, you are in the spirit though. Who, who gossiped to you that you should sing that song? <laughs> Hallelujah. I saw the shock on Bro Lauren's face. He was like, why are you singing our song ahead of time? Well, that's the spirit of God. And mothers were here, sitting at the back row, waiting for their children to be taught the ways of God. Train up a child in the way that he should go. When the child is old, he will not depart from it. One time they said somebody was missing in Babriga. I called my son and said, Man, this city is safe. What's happening? People are missing. Why? Why did the boy go missing? I know pastor had told me that things don't just happen. Then my son told me, he said, Mom, he said, but you know me. You know that is either I'm in church or I'm in school or I'm at home. Mama kept quiet and went to mind her business. <laughs> I just kept quiet. He said, but you know me. You know the place that I got. Train up a child in the way that he should go. When the child is old, he will not depart from that. Amen. God's word, I trust it. If you apply it to home, if you give it as, as capsules to your children early, you will enjoy your old age. Amen. I'm looking forward to that time when me and my husband, we are old. And we are walking like this. Hallelujah. And we are going to church. Let's go. Amen. Let's go. Hallelujah. And the children are all grown in their different places. Amen. The devil can't tamper with it. Hallelujah. Yeah. So God's word is a lamb and is a light. May you work for us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. One other way to get help from God is through prayers. Today you will ask for the spirit of supplication. And we are going to be praying the prayer. I'm an everyday woman. But if I say the hand of God is not upon my life, then I'm lying. I'm aware that his hand is upon my life. Hallelujah. Prayer works wonders. He fight battles that you are aware of. He fight even the ones that you are not aware of. Don't let the fire go down on your altar. Let it be alive. Put in coal. Put in wood. Let it be burning every day. And how do you keep it burning? Forsake not the gathering of the brethren. Forsake not the gathering of the believers. Because there is power and unity. Behold how sweet and pleased that it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. There is power in praise. When we stand there, we say, Shaka Balidada. Sombra Lika Tosolimbra Sakayidada. 
Manzo brahi katula pasekelele. Zokolim brasha balegele yado. Because we do not know what we ought to pray. The Holy Ghost makes intercession in us with groanings that cannot be uttered. You're pushing them back. You're destroying them. You're building. Oh, when the Lord caught Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I'm so young. The Lord said, you're not young. I'm speaking to you now, the young ones. You're never too young to have a sound prayer life. Speaking tongues is mystery to hell. Prayers. Pray fervently for your children. I was sharing with a woman one day. I said, we went for a video. You know, back then in Nigeria, you come back, you're so tired. But you see, because you're a minister, you have to be there. When we returned, I was still very tired. But I couldn't go to bed. I was alive in the spirit. I went to the library in the home and I sat on the chair. And from 4 a.m. to like 9 a.m., the Lord took hold of my lips. I was speaking in tongues. As I was speaking in tongues, the Lord will bring the picture of my first child. I will speak and speak and speak and he will show me a, a glimpse. He will bring the second one. I will speak, speak, speak. He will move. He will bring. What's, what's going on here? Why did I remember that particular day? It was a day of a cancer. The daily bread used to be a very popular daily devotion. One of the key words I read one day that the best gift a child can have is a Christian mom. Learn to pray for your children. I don't know what else I want from God anymore. But all I want now is that these children, I will shoot them like arrows. Shoot them like arrows. How did fellow mothers raise CEOs and MDs of companies? Why should my own be different? Why can't I raise them? I support them physically and I support them spiritually. Keep your heart alive. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. These things I'm sharing here, they are like boasts, but they are boasts in the Lord. I won't go outside and talk. No, I'm boasting in the Word. He said, the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Please, once my time is over, just let me know. I will drop the mic humbly and I will go. Hallelujah. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he heard me. That's prayers. And delivered me from all my fears. Woman, don't be afraid. Man, don't be afraid. He said they looked to him and they were radiant. And their faces were not ashamed. This woman cried out and the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his troubles. What kind of cry is that? Was he on the street wailing? What kind of cry is that? That cry was prayers. He said, this woman standing here cried out to the Lord. And the Lord heard and it delivered. Not just from some, but from all troubles. There are troubles you do not know about. You, do, you have no idea how many battles the Lord is fighting on your behalf. But just do your part. Oh Lord, you are my helper. Oh Lord, fight my battles. Oh Lord, arise. And let the enemies be scattered. Just keep speaking it. When you do not have a human language, black on to scoli ya suit. Magade ya kondo scoli ya ika tu ya pasamale. Gete la koto simbra ika tu la gede. Zemale kado do ikra do scoli pa katata. And as you are blasting in the Holy Ghost, bombs 
are dropping in their camp. Amen. <laughs> Can you remember the leopard? Those those men that they were crippled in the in the in the Samaria battle. The sound of their feet was like bomb to the enemy. Learn to pray. He said their faces were radiant, they were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard and saved him out of all his trouble. The angel of the Lord had comes all around those who fear him and delivers them all tests and see that the Lord is God. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be afraid to ask God. He has so much in the storehouse of heaven. Lord, I need you to do like this in the life of this child. Lord, heal this one. He needs to be improved in his mass. Lord, touch his IQ for me. Understanding is from God. I always share, there was a time when I was young, I was learning how to read a clock. I wasn't understanding it. So my elder brother used to teach me. I will never forget the way he flogged me one day. This is my finger here. God swollen. Sarah, I've been teaching you this time, you don't understand it. And the finger became so hurtful. But I just wake up one morning. I will never forget. And I was standing in front of the clock. And as I was looking at the clock, an understanding came from nowhere. And from that day, I understood the clock. Understanding comes from God. Don't you know there are some children in the house, you don't need to teach them so much. Just little like this. They picked it. Where did it come from? It's from the Lord. Ask the Lord. This money cannot buy. Ask him for plenty of wisdom because we need it in our daily work. Ask him for knowledge. He will give to you. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. The next one is faith. This world that we live in. Who knows where he's going? He said they just shall do what? They shall by live faith. by faith. Matthew chapter 15 verse 27. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, the woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away. You see? This is human perspective. You know at times when church grows so big, there are certain people that can't see pastor again. No? Ah, it must be class enough to see pastor. Even the apostle, he says, send her away. It's not your class, it's not your time that we need here. But you see, God is not a man. And that's why I love the church. The true church has room for everyone. There's a slogan. Many things that there is a slogan here that says the church is big enough to accommodate you, and it is small enough to reach you. Any problem that comes your way, what God cannot do does not exist, and what the world cannot give, I don't need that. Send this woman away. She's constituting users. Professionals are the ones we need here. Top-notch ladies are men. She didn't pass gym. Did you, did you see her car outside? Hallelujah. Amen. I should distract the man of God. Faith. When you need something from the Lord, Please forget every other one around you. Focus on Jesus. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author 
and the finisher of her faith. She blocked her ears from every distraction. I'm that kind of woman. I don't know too many things happening in the church. Oh, the time is over. Thank you, ma. Then she came and worshiped, saying, Lord, help me. But the answer I said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to all woman, Great is your faith. Hallelujah. Where is your faith? Why are you losing faith so early? Why do you think God has forgotten you? God hasn't forgotten you. He sees it all. He knows it all. But he wants you to reach out in faith. Disregard every circumstances. I have a minute to go and finally thanksgiving. Luke 17, 17. And Jesus said, Where there not turned that were cleansed, but where are they nigh? Thanksgiving is a master key that can open any door. I have only one daughter among the boys. I always share this story. When she was, one day I cook concussion rice in the house. I said, Mommy, she looked at me. I said, Come back. Bah, bah, bah. Give her that bomb. I said, Whenever Mommy gives you food, say thank you. Yes. Today she's the most amiable girl I can ever find on the face of the earth. Thank you, Mommy, for giving us a room to bloom. Thank you, Mommy. All this, even for the things I've not drawn, she's thanking me. Thank God for the ones he has done. Thank him for the ones he has not drawn. If you give me one error, the way I will thank you in this world, you will think that you built a house for me. Because thanksgiving is a sign of appreciation, is a sign of honor, is a sign of value. When we turn to the Lord and say, Lord, we are thankful. Today is our thanksgiving service. What has the Lord not done? Forget about it. Count the many blessings that the Lord has done. That you are alive is enough. Let's rise up on our feet. I don't know what God has not done. But I'm thanking God because you are here. I'm thanking him because we are alive. I'm thanking God for the victories. I'm thanking him for the wins. I'm thanking him for the deliverances. I'm thanking him for answering our prayers. I'm thanking him for the strength, even in the storm. Oh, put your mother and begin to appreciate him. Give him glory, honor. Bless him for his God. He's a mighty God, he's a great I am. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Lord, we are grateful. As a church, we are thankful. We are standing here not weeping, but rejoicing. Our heart is full of praise. Our heart is full of thanks. For every household, we thank you. Every young child, we thank you. Every man, we thank you. For every woman, we thank you. For fighting our battles. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for your wonders. Thank you for your miracles. Thank you for your wonders. Lord, we give you glory. We give you glory.
and give her the anointing to, to, to teach us more. To speak the word of God without fear or favor. We give you glory and honor, Lord, for your servant in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is offering time, but um, let me just use this opportunity to tell us, you know, um, we are supposed to have these envelopes in our seats before the word of God is finished. So that by giving us that envelope, nobody, any person beside you is not supposed to see what you are giving to God. So you have a liberty of time to bring that money, put it in the envelope, the amount that you have conceived with your heart. You see, I'm here right now. If I have to open my wallet now, everybody will see what I'm giving. Sister, Sister Angela, God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Open, put up where, please. Bring that bountiful offering for our Lord Jesus. Put your hands into your pockets and give to God. Cannot outgive God. We cannot outgive God. Praise the Lord. Please lift your offering unto God as we pray. Holy Spirit, out of the abundance that you've given us, Lord, we bring out this token for you, ancient of days. We bring out this token because we want to hearken to your voice that said, Give, it shall be given unto you. Good measures, press down, shaking together, and rolling over. Lord God Almighty, Father, for every hand that has dipped inside his or her pocket this morning to bring out token for you, Lord, for all the things that we have denied ourselves, some people are shopping with this money right now. This is Christmas coming. That we have decided to bring forth some of them, Almighty Father, King of Glory, to give to the furtherance of your kingdom. Papa, Lord God, Almighty Father, King of Glory, we begin to speak. May this offering, Almighty Father, work for us in the name of our Lord Jesus. A shade of days, transform us, Almighty Father, King of Glory. Give us that financial blessing that we need, Papa, Lord God, Almighty Father, so that we will be ambassadors, Almighty Father. We will understand your word, Almighty Father, and have faith, Almighty Father, in giving. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please celebrate your offering. Praise the Lord. Offering time. Blessing time. You are God.
Amen. Can we have our seat? God bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, Mrs. God bless you for that word. I have a word in that word in Jesus' name. And I believe that every one of us grabs something as we are going. Hallelujah. And I believe that whatever that the Spirit of God has ministered to you this afternoon, you will not lose it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, that the question that was asked when he was preaching, is, where is your faith? Where is your faith? What is that thing that is making your faith failing? What is that thing that is trying to tamper with your faith? Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you this afternoon. Don't allow it. Praise the Lord. No matter what it is, don't allow it. Don't allow anything to tamper with your faith. Last week, I asked God, I said, God, help me. Let nothing tamper with my faith. And God had me and delivered my family. Praise the Lord. In that note, please, I want you to appreciate my husband, our reverend. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I can tell you that uh, last week was a very stressful week for me. Hallelujah. And God had us. Praise the Lord. And I want to thank everyone in this house. Everyone. I have a family. Hallelujah. Please appreciate yourself. I have a family. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for everyone. I thank, thank you for the food. Hallelujah. Thank you for the callings. Thank you for the messages. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for calling us to know how is your family. How are you pushing on? And I want you to thank you for all the messages you have sent to pastor. Thank you for the growing place. You know, there's the one that blew my mind. Hallelujah. There was the one that blew my mind. I think that boy was 19 years. Yeah, pastor, am I mistaken? 18 to 19 years. He was in this church. He was one of our technical boys. They have moved to UK. You know? Suddenly, he called me. Just an 18 years boy. He called me. He was remembering, you know, reminding me many things that I cannot even remember. He was saying a lot of things, thanking us, saying a lot of things. He said that everything that we taught him, he seen all of them now. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, though no, it was not easy. When I would lash them, push them, do everything. He's in college now, living in campus. He called me, said, man, everything is coming together. He started a fellowship last week. Hallelujah. Just an 18 years boy. It's true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what he told you? He said, man, don't think all your words are failing. He said, no. Keep on speaking in our life. And he told me, he said, next year I'm coming. He has been here before. He said, next year I'm coming to Ireland. Praise the Lord. You know, and he said, I called pastor. Pastor is not big. So I told him what happened. He now sent a message to pastor. My husband. I didn't know that he had, my husband did not know that he has called me. He now sent me the message the boy sent to him. When I read this, I said, where is this boy getting this wisdom? Where is he getting this wisdom? Hallelujah. You know, pastor talk, us, or talk about it. They train up a child in the way they should go. So that when they grow, they will not depart. Even when, as we as a parents, even when they are not, when we are not there, they will not depart. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you see them misbehave. Sometimes you see them, you know, it will look like an enemy is coming to sow a bad seed. Never mind. Keep on talking. Keep on encouraging. Keep on teaching. Keep on rebooking. Praise the Lord. Because you will see the benefit in Jesus' name. The seed of the righteous cannot be wasted. I believe so much in it. I remember when I was going up too. My mother would talk. My father will talk. La 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 la. Look at me here today. Praise the Lord. So I don't lose any hope in any young person in this house. And as an adult, please let's not lose any hope for any child in this house. Because let me tell you, you don't know where you see. you don't know what they will become tomorrow. Please let have a word of encouragement to every child in this house. Let's not put them down with our words. Encourage them. The ones that you think they are not doing very well today, maybe the one that is doing well tomorrow. Please, I ask you in the name of God. 
and I pray that God will help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Um, we have a new person in our midst. Hallelujah. Can we appreciate God? Hallelujah. 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 You're welcome, Ma. We love you. This is Trem Barrigan, Spirit of David. In here, nothing goes wrong. We have a spirit of liberty. We welcome you with love, with joy, with peace. If you're not here today, I don't know what this service would have been. Because we see this face, we are blessed. Hallelujah. And I know you are blessed, ma. God bless you, ma. You know, when you enter this house, you enter in peace. As you're going, you're going in peace. Every blessing that I have received today in this altar, nothing will tamper with it in Jesus' name. God bless you and bless you and bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, praise the Lord. We are in good time. I, I was planned that we would close in time and go and rest. Praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Our announcement every Monday is our fasting and prayer. Please, uh, sometimes pastor did not send a uh, prayer topic. Just pray for the church and pray for uh, your family. Pray for this family because I know that God is doing mighty in our midst. He may, he may not see it, but I believe that God is doing mighty things in this family. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. On Thursday is our Bible study, Tuesday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Adults, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. God bless every one of us. And please, can you appreciate um, our love for me? Hallelujah. Ma, I had a it was wonderful. God bless you. And continue to increase in Jesus' name. You know, I wanted to join, but I was with my team with us. Let me not go and do something that will put me in trouble. So I stay calm. But as I was, my, my body was each and I want to be blessed. Hallelujah. So, but Lord, God bless you in Jesus' name. Every third Friday, every third Friday and every month is our all night. We pray physically here. And if you are able to come in, good. But if you are not able, please join us online. And God, God will reach you blessing in Jesus' name. And on uh, Tuesday is uh, our um, uh, Tower of Grace. God bless you, man. There's a lot on this brain. Praise the Lord. On Tuesday is our grace um, from uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you are free, the house of God is open. We just come and pray. And God answers prayer. And if you are if you are online, please, if there's any prayer points you want the church to pray, please drop it here. We will pray for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Next week, 11th of December, is our annual Thanksgiving. Hallelujah! 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 I can't imagine how that day will be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know that every Thanksgiving and worship we are going to offer God here is going to receive them in Jesus' name. So come with your dancing shoe. Come with your songs. Please, if you have not given for our Lord your songs that day, don't, don't worry, you will get a new song. The technical will get a new song, a good song for you to dance. So if you have not, I don't want to see anybody going into the into the technical to go and start, you know, stopping. Please, if you have not given them your song, don't worry. There are a lot of songs that will be played for you that day. Please, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And on the 18th of December will be our Carol Sunday. Are we getting ready for ya? And God will bless everyone of us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then youth have their hangout today, 4 o'clock to 5 p.m. I think. Yeah, praise the Lord. Can we stand on our feet in Jesus' name? God bless everyone of us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Favor our decoration, please. Are we done? The Lord gives me the seed to sow and the bread to eat. He guides me continually. He satisfies my soul in drum. He makes my bones fat, and I am no water with carry. And like a spring of water, whose well has failed I will be in houses and live in them. I will plant my yard and eat the fruit of them. I will not be I will not plant another in it. I shall not be Trouble. I will not go out in haste, nor go by fire. For the Lord will go before me, and the God of Israel will be my reward. His kindness shall never be removed. 
every day I live and pray, I am getting better spiritually, physically, financially, mentally, morally, in all my endeavors. I have more for a purpose. I will fulfill this purpose and I will arrive at God's will end for my life. Nothing will cut me short. I will make a complete impact in my world for the kingdom. It is my year of aspiration. God, there is power in the word of God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We'll give you praise. We'll give you adoration. Thank you for your blessing this afternoon. Thank you for every prayer that you have answered. Father, even as we are going to our houses, Father, go before us in the name of Jesus. Father, let this week be blessed in Jesus' name. Let it be blessed in our family and our children in the name of Jesus. And everyone that come around us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We'll give you praise. Be it our way, so then. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fresh of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, His name shall be us all the days of our lives, and we shall join the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go around and say someone you are blessed this way. Hallelujah.